I grew up as a child enthusiastic and passionate about doing things that were adventurous, getting out and exploring the planet, and whether that was motorcycles or boats or airplanes, flying was something that when I was very early age I found very inspirational. It was the ultimate in freedom. Aviation today is really about moving your body from A to B. But when it comes to enjoying flying as an experience, it doesn't exist. I spent about eight years in the Air Force flying F-16s. When I left the military and came back to Stanford Business School, I was trying to get out of a flight suit and into a business suit. I happened to notice one day in a magazine a little obscure rule change. And it was the FAA saying that they were going to announce a new class of airplane called light sport airplanes, a new class of license called the sport pilot. And the concept was to finally make airplanes accessible to the average human being, make them safe and affordable, and a license that you could get in a matter of a couple of weeks. So there was a moment where I realized what aviation could be. And as an academic exercise, I'm just going to study it. In each class, I would spin them towards something related to this project. So the first one was a market analysis. And an aha was, whoa, the, there's a big market here, bigger than I expected. The other aha moment was, if a startup does not do this, it likely will not materialize. I had a business plan and I had thrown the switch to on. Kirk and I met in a design class, an engineering design class at Stanford. And every project we had, Kirk found a way to turn that project into some kind of aviation experience. We actually reconnected later on when I was teaching product design at Stanford and he was back at the DSB. We reconnected over, over lunch. During lunch, it hit me. Can I show you PowerPoint? And he goes, all right, so I pull up my PowerPoint. He basically detailed out all of the opportunity. And I go, Dude, I, th I think you're the guy I'm looking for. What you know about the consumer product design process, what you're teaching at Stanford, what you lived and breathed, the airplane world doesn't know. I know enough about that to know I need somebody like you. It's easy for me to go, okay, I can see where this could be in the future. And that's why, as the story goes, you know, the next morning I'm calling him up. He goes, I so get this. He goes, I'm in, I'm all in, what do you need? In a way, you could say that the work that Kirk did at the GSB is directly leading to this product we have. That's the beginning of the DNA of the company. If you want to take advantage of this recreational opportunity, the best way to do that is to bring recreational flying to the forefront and really make a power sport out of aviation. By the time I left Stanford, I felt confident enough from my fundamental business acumen and understanding of things that I could walk in any boardroom with any business executive. And I felt comfortable having a dialogue. And that confidence is important. And the tool set that I got there was invaluable in the next phase, and that is creating the company. As we move from business strategy into implementation and design, what should this airplane be? What should it deliver? What's the lifestyle? How will people use it? We quickly honed in on this notion of, right, we'll have an amphibious airplane that allows you to fly and land on land or land on water. It's not airport to airport. This is airport to off airport. So we have folding wings that allows you transportation to move your airplane wherever you want to take it, makes it more recreational. Now you can take it camping, fishing, exploring, whatever you want. And so the company's more than an airplane. It's about really honoring the human experience and delivering you something that, that when you finally go out and fly, you find that you can fly. It's safe. You can learn to do it in a reasonable amount of time. You actually can't afford it. Our, our goal is for our customers when they come back for the first time and they fly this thing, they go, oh my God. But all those things tie back to that original strategy that came out of the GSB, which is we are going to create a power sport around recreational flying. It's a two-person, one engine, relatively lightweight, simple airplane that a new sport pilot can learn to fly in about two weeks very safely. And you look at the airplane, you look at the cockpit, and you go, it's relatively simple. I can understand this cockpit. It looks like something I can do. That doesn't happen by accident. It happens by people who understand that process. The design process at ICON is really based on what we learned at Stanford, and that's the classic ideate, build, test, and repeat. And you learn from that testing, and then you go back and you iterate that process again. We the first conventional aircraft that's met the full FAA spin-resistant standard. So what that means for you is it's very safe. What the A5 is, is an unadulterated, unapologetic representation an execution of what flying 
is romantically designed to be, and that's this human aspirational experience. I think both Kirk and I feel like Stanford has been transformative in our personal lives and our careers. I can say this emphatically. If it was not for my experiences at Stanford, both in the engineering school and design school and the business school, ICOM would not exist. All of the sort of Stanford networks and connections and influencers that we still rely on today, it's, it's easy to say that without those Stanford experiences, ICON would not have been an idea and it certainly wouldn't have reached the place where it is today. I feel indebted because that, that experience was, was critical to where we have come from today and where we're going in the future.